What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, today is gonna be like a very vlog, but very real talk conversation. It has been requested by so many of you to do a fitness motivation chat and talk through. So let's, I feel like we need to go into the gym to do that. Hopefully it's bright enough up there, but let's go down to the gym. Maybe Carl will join us. Oh, that was predictable. What's that mom? The camera's rolling. Please let me be a part of it. So I, I just finished my workout and I put on a, a t-shirt, a little crop, little crop Mickey t-shirt, it's from Zara. All right, so what I've basically done is laid out five different steps that I kind of took in my own fitness journey and how I see fitness motivation. And it's no secret, like, listen, I am about to have margarita clock. I love margaritas. I love a good cocktail. I love living life. I don't like deprivation. I don't like feeling as though the pendulum like swings one way and I'm on like some sort of a crash diet. And I feel like that's just a rule for life. Anytime that you restrict yourself in a certain way to an extreme and you've swung one way, that will let up eventually and you will swing hard the other way. So if you get into like gimmicks and crash dieting and you're like, I'm gonna go hard for whatever amount of days, it's really hard for it to remain consistent if you're depriving yourself to an extreme as in like you're not happy doing it. So I really feel like finding, I hate like whenever people say hashtag balance when it has to do with just the balance of really being off track. But if there is a balance between being happy and being healthy, then you in your mind will be the happiest and that in turn will yield results. And I really feel that happiness equals progress. If you are progressing in your life and you feel good about what you're doing, you will always be happiest. And when you're happiest, your body will respond. Your body will achieve what your mind believes. I truly believe that. If you speak negatively, negatively to yourself and you wake up every single morning and you look in the mirror and you hate what you see and you say that out loud or in your mind, your body's gonna go cool game on. I am a true testament to that. I've done that to myself in the negative way and in the positive way. And if you're, can I just make a true statement like as your friend that someone might need to tell you, if you are able to work out, then you shouldn't be taking that for granted. And you should love the body that is allowing you to work out because some people would love to be in your shoes. No matter how hard you think your life is, no matter how terrible it is, there is someone out there wishing that they had your life. I just wanna put that out there for a second. So let's jump into it. I literally have five steps to success. So we're gonna talk about your set offs and your triggers. We're gonna talk about systems to get you started. We're gonna talk about supplements. We're gonna talk about a schedule and we're gonna talk about support. So basically your five steps to success. And no, this isn't some like weird gimmicky, like you can do it type of thing. It's really just, if you struggle with working out every single day, I want you to know that you don't have to have the perfect setup. Like this was a goal for us to have this home gym. Like it, it was on my dream board for years. We started working out, me and my husband, from our condo living room floor and I had to roll our dining room table, the same dining room table that we still have, the one on wheels, we would roll that under the, the living room table would roll it underneath the dining room table. We had no room in our condo and we still made it happen. So I'm gonna go through all the things that I did, but I want you to know before we even get started, in terms of triggers and in terms of things that kind of set you off, that's number one, the things that set you off and the things that you know spiral you out of control, I feel like it would be like your set off spirals, let's call them that since we're like in the S train here. So one thing that I would do is late at night, that would be a trigger for me. And going to bed really late, I knew that that equaled excess amounts of cocktails. I knew that that equaled excess amount of snacking, maybe ordering food and just spiraling out of control. It meant not waking up as early. So trying to find that balance. Now I'm someone that I don't like going to bed early. So I had to figure out a way that I could go to bed at a reasonable time, kind of start shutting off the clock, but recognizing what your triggers are. Another trigger for me is 5 p.m. When 5 p.m. hits, I know in my mind that it's cocktail o'clock and that can be really bad because then you're just, you're, you're ready for a cocktail, you wanna snack on all the things, and it's just out of pure habit. So maybe for you, that's on your drive home from work, you stop by McDonald's. Maybe that's every single weekend, you order food instead of making food. It can be anything. It could literally be whatever, but the first step is figuring out what your triggers are and how to replace that trigger with something that makes you equally as happy or maybe just balancing it out. 
We are still heavily in construction, so I'm gonna try and do my best to like block out the construction noise, but it is what it is. It's literally right there. So when I figured out my triggers specifically, I aim to replace them or just make them as happy as I could and as, you know, boosting of serotonins and all the things and all the emotions in my head that made me as happy, but without the health side effects. So perfect example is cocktail hour. During the week or every now and again, yes, I will have a cocktail. I'll have a cocktail on the weekends or sometimes during the week, it doesn't really matter. And that's another thing. I don't make it so that it's like on Friday night, I can have my, I don't do that. I just, I'm reasonable with what I do. So here's how I kind of see it. I will try and figure out things that make me just as happy. And really the whole principle of cocktail hour for me that I love, and we could do this for you with like breakfast or whatever food that you struggle with or alcohol or whatever. And I literally go through this in depth in my fit gym. This is literally what I do. So I have, and I have a video of this in my prep school in the fit gym, but I make a cocktail hour of like a bunch of little things on a plate because ultimately it's the same thing, whether it's chips and cheese and dips and like a bunch of things that I know that aren't gonna make me feel super great and just not, you know, feel great internally and in the long run. Yeah, sure, will I have them sometimes? I love myself some chippies. Popcorn is literally my favorite food group, so yes, I have it. But the majority of the time what I do is I try and make a plate that is just as exciting with just as much and I'll give you a really tangible tip. Most of the time what we love about like salty snacks and potato chips and if that's your kind of area of like struggle, you crave the crunch. So if, you, and you might be thinking I'm crazy, but try it. You, you are so satiated by the feeling of the crunch that if you were to replace it with, let's say really thin, like they literally sell chip shaped carrots. I don't mean the fried vegetable chips. I mean like a literal carrot, like a raw carrot, but it's like undulated and it's like, it looks like a ruffle. It's still a full carrot. And again, I don't mean those like bags of veggie chips. It's not healthy. That's like literally like we're kidding ourselves. But if you're gonna have a veggie and replace it and have maybe like some Greek yogurt dip or something that's really clean and healthy, then to me, in my mind, like it might not be for you, but in my mind, the triggers of that, I'm just as happy. So I know that at 5 p.m. if I make myself my detox mocktail, which is like super spicy and delicious, and sometimes when I'm like way off track, I'll almost trick myself into making like a lime detox drink so it tastes like a margarita, and I'll even put a little bit of salt on the rim, just so it's almost the same and I put in a fancy glass and I have my fancy plate and I don't deprive myself in that way, but I try and flip the script on any of the set offs and things that make me spiral out of control. So that's definitely number one. You've got to figure out your triggers and what sets you off. We're gonna pivot. This would also be a tip, but no, I'm gonna move us to the other end of the gym so that hopefully it's a little bit quieter for you to figure stuff out. All right, let's move on to step number two. All right, so number two is supplements. And I don't mean this in the sense of taking a bunch of random stuff to possibly have a quick fix. I actually mean the opposite, is that if you're lacking in physical exercise or in proper nutrition with the hope of just taking a pill or a tea or something, you might be thinking that you're helping yourself out. And I know that there's plenty of people that go through this, you're actually doing yourself such a disservice. And you know deep down that the only solution is really gonna be some hard work, some good nutrition, some balanced nutrition, and to sweat it out. Like there's no, there's no random quick fix. And I know that we hear this all the time, but for whatever reason, sometimes we just need a reminder that, and I hope that this can help you. What you could be doing in you know taking that quick fix of whether it's a tea, a pill, not working out or just trying to do some like random crash diet, you could be hurting your body more. You could be destroying your digestive tract. You could be hurting your joints. You could be doing all sorts of things that are actually gonna set you backwards instead of just doing the thing that might in the moment seem a little bit harder, but I tr trust me, it is not harder. So in terms of supplements, figure out something that works for you. What works for me is I have my smoothie every single morning. It's a, it's basically a superfood smoothie. It's not like a post-workout. I definitely have a post-workout every now and again when I need like a really high dense dose of protein, but mostly what I do as a post-workout is a smoothie of basically all of like those fancy names of things that you put into a green smoothie, but it tastes good. So for me, that balance works because it tastes like a cake and acts like a salad and this girl doesn't like kale. So that's one supplement that I take. I also take collagen, which is working. 
I take a pre-workout, which is pr a pretty much all natural pre-workout. It still gives me the good jittery, you know, jumpies before, but that's about all that I take. Sometimes I'll take a fish oil. Sometimes I will take, you know, a specific vitamin if I'm not feeling well. But other than that, I really keep it pretty simple. And I think that there's something to be said for that. So you don't have to overcomplicate it. You don't feel like you have to have it all under control and knowing exactly what to take and when. I just think that you need something that's legit, that's like for real and not some sort of a magic pill and you need to get real about that. And in terms of motivation, what this means is that you won't feel defeated when you, you know, step into the gym and you try and work out and you're trying to get these results and you're not seeing them because of the damage that you've done on your body. And it's also not putting it all on this one magic solution because I'm telling you the magic solution ain't that magic is not going to work. The only way to do this is for you to be consistent and for you to make it a part of your daily life. Okay. I'm excited about this one. Number three is a schedule. Don't you love how we're sticking with all of the S's? So, so far we've done your set off, like what makes you spiral, your supplements and your schedule. So listen, I have a schedule that I follow. I just posted about it on my Instagram and it's all still in the highlight section of my Instagram. So if you want to check out the 31 days to get ripped, there's also a video about it on my channel, but having a schedule is everything. Having a fun schedule is even more appealing. But more than that, having your breakdown of your calendar, knowing what you're going to do as your workout, keeping it fun. So the way that I do it is there's a different workout every single day. There's certain workout blocks. There's certain days where we do abs. There's certain days where we stretch, like everything is laid out. So I know that in a week, what I'm going to be doing, what I want to share with you in terms of your schedule is scheduling it with you. That if you have a friend or a spouse or someone that's saying, Hey, you know, do, skip your workout. Let's go for drinks. And I used to do this all the time, especially when I was trying to get into working out and trying to make it a daily thing. If there was something that was overlapping with the time in which I was going to work out in order for me not to skip it, I would just say, I have an appointment. And you know, who the appointment is with it's with you. You have an appointment with yourself. And I'm, I'm telling you the reason why I on my calendar have something every single day, there's no off day. There's never an off day on a calendar that I make in the fit gym because I think that every single day you should sweat or you should stretch. And even if that's for like a five minute, amazing rollout, can you see my, yeah, you can see my foam roller right there that happened today. And part of this is to, is to roll out or to stretch. And there's, that's literally on the calendar because it's scheduled time with myself for me to just chill the F out and to, to just focus on nothing but breathing and doing my workout. And I'm telling you it's therapeutic and people that do it know it. Do you ever notice that successful people often work out first thing in the morning? Like I think of people like Bob Iger, he literally shared his schedule and he gets up at, he's a beast, but still he gets up at four o'clock in the morning. He does his workout. I think he does it at the Disney offices and then he gets to work. Like that's amazing. The, any person that you see, like an amazing YouTuber, like Casey Neistat, he works out first thing in the morning. I just, I think that there's something to be said about that. So schedule the time with yourself. You'll be that much more consistent with it. Have a calendar to follow. It'll make it that much more easy for you to wrap your head around and keep it fun. Keep it fun and keep it consistent. Number four is your support system. So I have heard from so many people, especially girls in the fit gym. They talk about how and I've literally heard the story of how this one girl, she was trying to do one of our programs. And she said she was literally working out in her living room and her husband was eating potato chips next to her being like, why are you doing that? And she said, it's hard to stay motivated. And I get that because our spouses sometimes will not be supportive. Now I have a great husband that's always been supportive of that. And he really does value health and fitness. And he's always said that it should be a priority. So I've never had any backlash on that, but I felt it from friends or family members, or even just being on social media. And whenever I decided to start making that shift, people like what, what's up with you now? Like, what are you doing? I've been there. And I think that the best thing you can do for support is find a little planet of people that, you know, can hold you accountable, that can cheer you on, that get you. And whether that is something like the fit gym where it's hundreds of girls that it's like an all girl sleepover. And we talk about everything that has to do with fitness and beyond, but maybe j just on Instagram, like maybe a, a buddy system where you check in with each other and it's virtual. And that's what I do in my app. But I just think like, if you don't have that, find that because the support and the accountability is everything. And having that little planet of people that get you that are your support system. Like, Hey, do you work out today? It means it's, it's worth so much more than you might realize. And having that support when you might not have it elsewhere can be really, really important. And I know that it was for me in my own journey. Okay. And the fifth, and final tip is to make it excuse proof. So it is having a system. 
I believe in having a system. I believe in having, like I said, having a calendar, having something that I follow. So I know that every single day when I press play on my workout, that I have a spot to go to, that I have a block of workout that I can follow, that I have a meal plan that I can follow and I know what I eat. So this is literally what I provide, like meal one, two, three, four, and five. And here are your options for the entire month. So the way that I do it, is I block my work. So I have block one, two, and three. And not every day is the same, every day is different, but I make it excuse proof. So here's how I do it. Not only do I follow a schedule, everything is either in my phone, so the workouts are performed on my phone, on demand, kind of like Netflix, and they're also on Apple TV, and they're also on my iPad, and they're also on my computer. They're also downloadable, so I can go anywhere. If I wanna go step outside and my Wi-Fi won't make it there, I can download it and go outside. If I'm in the middle of nowhere, like Andre and I just got back from Montebello and I did like a whole staycation, I worked out in the gym. I put in my little devil earbuds. If you haven't seen them, they're super cute, my little wireless earbuds. And I just streamed my workout. Do you wanna know the most hilarious thing? That village where that hotel is, is like a population of nothing. There's nobody there. And it's in the, it's in the middle of the woods. And this woman, was was in the gym with Andre and I, all three of us were doing the same program. I didn't know her and we were doing the same streamed workout. Like that's insane. It just shows no one was using the actual gym equipment. Everybody was just working out in the gym, doing their thing with their streamed workout. And the way that I do it is it's quick. It's 25 minutes tops. I might add on through like an ab block. I might do an ab workout and I might have an extra cardio, but for the 31 days to get ripped, like it's simple. It's really get in, get it done, get out and get ripped. And there's no BS, there's no fluff, there's no BF. And I just think that the no BS approach of not having an excuse option makes so much sense. And now, right now I get it. You might not have the option to go to a gym, so you might feel like you're falling off. Or if you do go to a gym, it's so much easier to say, ah, yeah, I don't know. And for me, in my own journey, that was my case. Like I was so, I not only didn't have the money to go to a gym, I was embarrassed. Like I didn't know how to use the equipment. I didn't know in which order I should be going. I didn't know what the etiquette was. Like I didn't know any of that stuff and I still don't know. But I just think that there's so much joy and excuse proofness in working out right here or back in the day whenever I worked out in my living room and I just did my thing and I could wear whatever I wanted to wear. Like the length of sh the shortness of my shorts is not appropriate for the general public. But I just think especially right now, cutting the excuses, putting your health first is so important. So figuring out how you can make it -proof, excuse proof, how you can go anywhere, how you can have your own calendar that you can follow that makes sense for you. And also the other thing is having something that's borderline equipment proof. So I've done programs before where it's literally just cardio. You can get a couple weights if you really want to, but having limited, limited equipment, you don't have to have all of that. Like I don't even use, that's for Andre. I don't even use that stuff. I just really think that understanding how to make it in your own mind that you won't be like, ooh, I don't know. And you can just make it that much simpler for you to press play. That's what I call it. I press play and I start. And there's no excuses. I love the programs too that I provide that have music even so that when I start, the music goes, I start rolling and things happen. So the way that my workout is blocked off right now is I have either, it depends on the day, but there's a 25 minute block of weightlifting. So I get some weightlifting in and you could do something like power blocks. Like we have power blocks and that's what we had at our condo. So it's all, tiered together. So if you don't have a ton of space for like a weight rack, you could just do something like power blocks. Excuse proof method. There is even water bottle weights that you could buy. So you just fill it up to the amount that you want the weight to be. So if you're traveling and you don't want to carry weights with you, or you don't have weights at home right now, cause I know it's hard to get them. I know you can get these water, water bottle weights, which is kind of cool. So make it excuse proof for yourself. Figure out what your blocks look like. If you wanna get in some strength workout, there's that 25 minute block that I do. On certain days, I will spin. So I always have a cardio block. So it's either spin for the people in the fit gym. They can either row, they can run. I don't really wanna run. Some days I'll, I'll kinda run. It's not my thing. but could run, row, spin, or we have like a rainy day cardio. So we have tons of cardio options. And I've even included one of my favorite, like 20 or minute, 20 minute or less cardio. So it's quick, it's effective, you get down to it. And then it sometimes we'll add on an ab block. And then other days there the, there's the stretch days and the roll out days. So we always use our foam rollers, but that way there's a breakdown of what you're doing. It's clearing your mind and it's excuse proof. So figure out where you're working out, what equipment you need, and how to limit the moment where you would go, Ugh, yeah, I don't know. And usually that comes down to exactly what I've shared. So your set offs and what makes you spiral, your 
supplements and how much you're tricking yourself into believing that you're taking some form of a magic pill when really just good hearted nutrition. You don't need a ton of stuff. Like I said, I just take my superfood smoothie every single morning and that does it for me. That keeps me on my game and I'm happy with that. I don't have to overdo it. And your schedule. So having a calendar that you follow, that you schedule time with yourself, your support system and the people around you that might not be supportive. You can find a planet of people that will support you anywhere. The internet is an amazing thing. And finally, making it excuse proof, having a system in place that works for you, that is no BS, that you know you can get it done and that you know that you won't stop yourself from starting. So I love you. I hope that this helped. I know that this was really like chill behind the scenes. I, I know you guys love a good behind the scenes vlog and sorry about the construction noise. I did my best, but I, we needed to have a real talk. And this was a highly requested video that I got messages about quite a few times. And I will leave all of the details down below for everything that I talked about. I will link as much as possible, but just please know more than anything, I'm a message away. I answer my DMs, I answer my emails, usually within the span of a couple hours. I'm on it, I'm here for you, I answer my comments. So if you need something or you just wanna talk, I'm here. So I will leave my email down below as well. I love you guys. And we are almost at the tail end of this. So make sure that you are subscribed. If you liked this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. I always appreciate, especially whenever I'll be honest, it's a little bit harder to film right now as the days are getting shorter. There's less daylight with construction. It's not always easy. I'm not perfect either. And sometimes it is hard for me too, but just know that you're definitely the motivation to show up and you're definitely, I'm just so grateful for this family and this audience and love you more than you would ever know. So thank you. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye dudes.